Another June of 2021, another Mario Golf Super Rush fails to impress me. And I thought this year was gonna be different. I had high hopes for Super Rush. I love me some Mario Golf, and the previous entry, World Tour on the 3DS, was excellent. The developer of these games, Camelot, well, they make the Mario Tennis games as well, and with the last three being Apocalyptic Horsemen, I just assumed that maybe tennis isn't Camelot's favorite thing to develop, but it pays the bills. Golf! is where Camelot's passion's at, baby. Are they hate f***ing it? Mario Golf Super Rush is the culmination of all the problems with Mario sports games these days. I wouldn't call it bad in the same way a game like Ride to Hell Retribution is bad. It's bad like the knife game. Because wow, I just f***ed myself over buying into this. There's nothing to this game. It's just a nothing special arcadey golf game with Mario characters. The gameplay has barely changed from previous Mario Golf titles. In fact, they dumbed it down even more. The courses are just generic golf courses for the most part. Very few Mario elements are actually at play here, which when you compare it to World Tour on the 3DS, that game had a course based entirely off of Yoshi's Woolly World a year before that damn game even came out. Even the most basic courses from that game still had a Mario-esque art style. Super Rush has a more realistic direction with how these environments look, which isn't like bad, but it doesn't look like Mario. These look like basic ass generic golf courses with like one Mario element thrown in there. Like grass, that's from Mario. These aren't bad golf courses to play on, but they're most certainly not interesting or exciting or fun. The game launched with only six available to play with half of them being grass based, which all kind of blended in with each other. Like, damn, why couldn't you do something cool like rain? I was worried for a second there. I thought this game was bad. Four grass-based courses, one of them it's raining, a desert course, and a Bowser lava one. That's it. Not only Super Rush comes with an adventure mode baked into the experience, but my god, this is the most lifeless and boring story mode I've ever played. It's basically just an overly drawn out tutorial in disguise as a story mode, which hey, that works. Tutorials have a lot of dialogue, so make that the story. These adventure mode missions just go on and on and on. On. They make you play like nine holes in a row, which can last quite a while, maybe like half an hour, and I could be doing really well the entire game, and then the last hole I botch. Guess who has to play all nine holes again? This is a tough one. And the adventure mode likes to do a lot of this fake ass world building, which makes no sense. Like, hey, go to your room to rest up for the next mission. So I just go to my room, hit the sleep button, and then I go right back to where I was originally. Like, what was the point of that? If there was something to do, new information to learn by going back to the lodge, maybe, but no! This just feels like they created an adventure mode and padded it out with pointless junk like this when no character has anything of note to say. There's nothing to do outside of just play the next mission and it's just the same thing over and over and over again! Like they included it just to say they included it without having a legitimate direction. I would have just preferred them doing a simple missions menu rather than waste all this development time on a useless hub world and characters to talk to. Maybe they could have spent that on more courses or better modes. I don't know. Let's bitch about speed golf. So this was the main new attraction with Super Rush. Hit your golf ball and race to it before the other players. It demos extremely well in trailers. Like it looks so fun and creative. And then you play it and realize this is incorporating the part of golf that video games always remove for a reason. Walk into your ball. Uh, yeah, speed golf might not actually be faster than regular golf, considering when I hit the ball, it would just take me to where the ball landed. Now, I have to walk all the way to it, not run, because running takes up stamina. I understand this is to balance the game, but god damn, does walking have to be this slow? Well, speed golf is something you can play on all the regular courses. Battle golf is a special version of speed golf taking place in this arena, and this is way more fun. The environment is lively and exciting. Power-ups and enemies make the terrain ever changing. You want to get the most balls in different holes before everybody else to win. This is what I'm talking about. There are only two battle golf courses and they're aesthetically the same. That's just what I wanted! Mario Golf Super Rush came up short in nearly every way. It's not a bad game at its core, but I'm not really into making excuses for this one. Mario Tennis Ace is shipped with similar problems, but at the very least, the gameplay was significantly improved from previous entries. It was a great enough leap where even though I wasn't a big fan of that one as well, I could see the argument that the core gameplay excused the lack of content and mediocre single player. Super Rush doesn't have that. It's just more Mario Golf, but dumbed down. World Tour launched for $30 with more courses with actual Mario aesthetics and gimmicks, and not just a random enemy and pipes in the background. 
and they had a season pass for $15, which increased the character and course count tremendously. Uh, coupled with the story mode in that game, which wasn't much to write home about, but that's better than Super Rush's Ransom Note, for $45 in total, you got significantly more with a legitimate feeling of love and passion behind it than what you got for $60 with Super Rush. This was inexcusable in my opinion. It's a tolerable golf game, sure, but my god it's depressing! This title followed Nintendo's trend of free updates for their multiplayer games, launching with a severe lack of content to later be rectified via updates finishing the game. Though they mask it as if they're giving you free updates out of the kindness of their hearts. No, honey, they're releasing a game with barely any actual content, they're gonna make their sales no matter what because people like me are f***ing idiots. And then they give you the rest of the game over time because then that helps market the game well after launch and keeps players invested. But what actually happens is the game launches with a lack of content and I get bored and have a bad taste in my mouth and don't want to play the game ever again and when free updates come out I don't care. I mean Nintendo's probably thinking we can make this game for half the budget by shelving content for later updates, launch it, make a ton of money via initial sales, then use that money to fund more content and if the game doesn't sell well we'll just abandon it and we ended up spending less on the game's budget in the long run. Mario Golf Super Rush updates ended in November. Yeah, because people weren't playing the game because they had no reason to. You launched it with an abysmal amount of content and when you start to update the game, everybody had already moved on. Tennis Aces got far more support for far longer. Super Rush got a few extra courses, which bums me out because some of these are actually good. The new Donk City course is great. This All-Star Summit one, I mean, it's kind of cool. Some of the new characters are fun, but again, like, Really? You saved Toadette for an update when she was already in the story mode. Like, her model is right there. She's playing golf. Why hold her back for a free update? That's it. I'm selling one of my copies. Why didn't Nintendo release this game when they did? It just feels rushed. It wasn't like they needed a big June release because they already had this.